Hey everyone, um, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. So excited to be here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to hang out with us. Uh, my name is Jonathan Solichin. I am an engineer here at SNAP, and I'm so excited to talk to you about Lens Cloud. Um, today in this session, we're gonna give a light overview of Lens Cloud, what it is, what it allows you to do, and then we'll go ahead and jump in into uh, building an experience. And today we'll be demoing an experience from scratch. And what we'll try to do is try to think about how lenses can be used as an interactive experience, um, how we can help people do things in their daily life. In our case, I think we'll go ahead and try to uh, see how uh, you can use lenses, lenses and augmented reality to help uh, train um, fit in fitness. Uh, we'll also use Lens Cloud then to uh, add multiplayer capabilities into our lens. You know, it's more fun to exercise with friends um, and to encourage each other. And so in this Q event webinar, um, you should see a chat button somewhere in the screen. Feel free to, or a Q&A button, I apologize. Q&A button somewhere in the screen. Feel free to ask questions as I go along. I'll try to catch them as I demo. Um, I have it on the right side of my screen. Um, so if I look right, that's what I'm doing. I'm checking to see if there are any questions and answers that I can provide. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank you again for being here. Um, I will also say that we're going to do both scripting and non-scripting. So uh, please um, let me know if you have any questions, pause me, uh, open the message because I'm just excited to show you what we can do, but this session is for you. So tell me what you want. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and jump into Lens Cloud um, and give a brief overview. Um, and if you haven't yet, you can check out our website at docs.snap.com. And this will provide us with documentation about what Snap provides. In this case, we're looking at Lens Studio, or you can use the search button here at the top. Um, you can type in Lens Cloud. You see I've done that before, and you'll jump into the Lens Cloud page. In this page, you'll get a brief overview. Um, Lens Cloud basically provides uh, some of the infrastructure that we use in Snapchat and backend services and allow you to have access to them. Uh, what that really means is you have access to multiplayer capabilities. Um, it provides you with location capabilities. So some of you may have seen us track uh, objects into um, buildings or cities. And finally, we have access to storage. So you can send and receive data from your friends and store it as to make sure you're in the same experience even when you log out and log back in uh, to Snapchat. So that's a little bit about uh, what Lens Cloud does. I'm, I wrote this really quick uh, message to summary. So maybe if you want to scribble this down, or I believe we might have the recording later. Uh, but while I put this up, I'm going to look to the right to see if there are any questions right now. Uh, this, there's a question about how long this session will be, and is it possible to get access to recording? Um, so that I believe the session will be about 35, 40 minutes. Um, we'll save some time at the end for questions. Um, and so let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow as well. Uh, feel free to use the Q&A for that. Um, and I believe we will have the recording at the end. Um, and we will get started shortly. But I also want to remind everyone, uh, as I'm giving time to scribble things down, that you can. there is a hackathon right now going on. Um, and we'd love to see the result of what you learned here. Um, or any other Lens Studio capabilities that you're taking a look at. Um, so please go ahead and check us out at uh, snap lensathon um, Go ahead and check that out. Um, we'd, be, we'd love to see uh, you show us your creativity, what you're thinking about, and what you want to see in the world. Uh, we can really create the world you want to see here uh, using the lenses. So take a look here. Um, 
And with that, I'm going to do one final summary of Lens Cloud and then dive into Lens Studio. So again, Lens Cloud allows you to do multiplayer um, in your augmented reality experience. Um, and when I say multiplayer, by the way, you have the ability to have experiences where you are, you and your friends are in the same room, co-located, and it will track the room that you're in, allow you to play together and track the augmented reality object in the same room. Um, or you can have it remote, and that's kind of what we'll be exploring today. You'll be able to be in a different location with your friends, um, and you'll be able to save the experience you're in your bedroom, they're in their bedroom, and still be able to have access to the same AR uh, objects. Um, and with this multiplayer capability, you can send real-time data. You can send data, receive data, get notified when new data. Um, so in our case today, we'll use that to have information like, oh, my friend has done a, a squat for our fitness training exercise. Um, and there's different ways you can store this data. We really want to make sure that your data is safe. So you might want to send your data and it disappears right away, or you might want to send your data and it stays as long as you and your friends are in the same chat. Um, so in addition to multiplayer, we have access to storage. Um, in this case, you're able to store your data in the cloud and you can store data for yourself, for the current user, being able to have ownership of that data, not allowing anyone else to have access to that data when you're in this lens. So when you're in the lens, you have data that only you can access or you can share in your session. So anyone in the session can have access to this data. So in our case today, when we say we want to help people exercise their um, their squats, we're going to try to store how many squats we've done um, in our data, right? So you know, like, hey, I've done 10 squats today, 20 squats today, tomorrow, and so forth. And you can invite your friends, and we'll store all the squat numbers into, uh, into the session storage. So that way, I can see that I've done 10, 10 squats. Um, your friend has done 10 squats, and in total, we've done 20 squats in the session. And so you're getting motivated uh, by knowing what your friends uh, have done and try to get you to do more. Um, and finally, we won't get a chance to talk about location, uh, but there's a couple of different things that you can do to attach your augmented reality experiences to different locations around the world. Thanks to Lens Cloud, we have custom landmarkers, which will allow you to um, attach your object to things you scan, for example, statues in your local city. You can have access to landmarkers, which will allow you to track objects to landmarks around the world, for example, Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty. And now recently we've released city landmarkers, um, specifically in London for now, um, that allows you to track objects through the entire city. So you can go to one part of the city, track objects, walk down the street in a different building in the same lens experience, still see that experience continue. You can have, for example, a really long object between those two buildings. So this is a little bit about LensCloud. Again, I recommend going to docs.snap.com. Go ahead and search for LensCloud and you can have a little bit more information as well as different template, examples, and so forth. Um, so with that, I'll jump into Lens Studio. And as Lens Studio loads up, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. So now you should see uh, my Lens Studio. Uh, please message if you don't see that. Um, it might start look a, a bit different from your Lens Studio um, because I move things around. By the way, if you didn't know, you can move things around in your Lens Studio too. Um, for example, you might want to you know, have your objects uh, wherever. For the purpose of this demo, I want to have as much big space as possible. So I move things around. Um, and you know, I'm gonna show you something really embarrassing right now. Um, because we're making an experience, we need some videos, right, to test out where your lens were. This is really important. You can't make a lens without testing it out. Uh, with Lens Studio, you can go ahead and send it to Snapchat to test. Uh, but for the purpose of the testing, really quickly, you can also use the built-in Lens Studio. So in this case, since we are trying to make 
a length that detects when you're squatting. Um, and if you've been wondering what is a squat, I'm about to show you in a second. Um, this is a really embarrassing video of me yesterday taking a picture of me squatting. Um, so please don't judge my form too much. Um, but hopefully it's enough to give you a sense of what we're doing. So I'm going to squat as in I'm going to move my body down. And I, that's one repetition. And we're going to count how many times I've done that. So throughout this video, you're going to see me do like hundreds of squats. Um, and that's why the preview video is really useful if you don't want to um, do the same action over and over again. Um, so now we have our video. How The first thing we need to know to check um, whether we're squatting or not is, of course, understand where the body is. And this is what Lens Studio uh, makes really easy. Uh, you can figure out where the body is without you know, fancy computer vision because uh, Lens Studio takes care of that for you. So the first thing we're going to do is add something to our lens in the objects panel. So things in your lens. And I'm just going to type in body because I want something to do with the body. In this case, I want to track the body in 3D. I want to know uh, the angles, rotation, and joints, and so forth. So I'm going to add full body tracking. And now I have this object. And if I click on this 3D body tracking, you'll notice here. Um, uh, in the inspector panel, the settings related to this 3D body tracking, I have access to attachment points. I can attach hips, uh, spine, neck, and so forth. And so well, let's put placeholder objects so we can see how the, uh, the body is being tracked. Um, again, for those of you who are joining us now, what we're trying to do is figure out what the body is doing so we can go ahead and um, track whether our body has done a squat position. So I've added a box. Um, I'm going to add another box here. Um, so now we have two boxes. Um, you can see it's moving um, there. And what we're going to do is just tell the box, hey, I want you, the box, to be um, attached to the hip. And we want the box to be attached to the foot. And all we need to do is say, hey, this attachment point hips. Um, you can click on the empty field. It'll bring up a pop-up and show you all the objects underneath that 3D body object tracking. And I'll choose hip. And on my, let's say, left foot, I'm going to type foot in foot. So now you can see those two boxes are attached to the hip and then to the foot. And so what we need to do next in order to check whether we're doing the squat is see the distance between the box. And since we're trying to do a demo, we're going to go uh, relatively quickly. But which is to say there are many ways to do this tracking. Um, uh, you know, you might want to check whether you stand or you uh, crouch down. But in this case, we're going to try to do something simple. Um, and what we can do is just check whether the object between the two boxes have gone close to each other, right? So you're starting to move your body down. You can add helper script, behavior. Behavior is a really nice helper script we built within Let's Studio. So again, plus, uh, I can type in behavior. You can see the helper script. And what it allows you to do is to use common triggers and response. So for example, when I tap, I can do something. I have a list of different options that you might want to do. So let's take a look here. Um, so we have the trigger, we can, on when our mouth has opened, or in this case, we want to do distance check. So when our hip, object A, and our foot is, let's say, closer than 60 units, um, I can do something. So in this case, response type, uh, I can say, hey, for now, let's just print a message. Uh, I've squatted, right? So let's take a look at our video again. Um, I went down, and it looks like I've squatted. So again, you can add 3D body tracking, attach objects to that 3D body tracking, in this case, the hip and the foot. And you can add behavior script to do common triggers, in this case, a distance check between the hip and the foot. And if it's less than some units, I want to print a message. So I'll leave this on for a second while I look at the Q&A. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot, or we'll have the video later. Um, let me take a look at the right. Sorry. 
So we have a question about uh, if you have your friend's avatar and you want them to join the session, um, how, how do you make sure they're facing uh, each other? Um, in, in this video, because we are just going down to the basic, I'm not sure we'll have time to answer this question, but it's a really good one. Um, so what I want to uh, maybe suggest you can do is if you go to, um, let's see here, if I can open my Safari real quick, um, file, new window, and go to lensstudio.snapchat.com. And um, actually, let's go to this. Let's go to community.snap.com. And you can ask this question, your questions here. There are a lot of other people on our forum. Um, we can answer the questions there. There are folks uh, here at Snap that checks the forum to make sure we can uh, try to answer that. So uh, shout out to community.snap.com. Um, and we'll try to get your answer there. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to uh, tackle that in this uh, demo. Um, uh, sorry, I think I just accidentally lost my logger panel there. So I'll try to put it back here. Um, OK, so now we've detected the box and the squat. Uh, what should we do next? Um, we're going to go ahead and at the multiplayer experience. So at this point, I've had my solo. Actually, before we go to this, the uh, uh, the multiplayer experience, we need to finish up. We need to count how many times the user has squatted. Um, and so what we can do is start writing script. So Java, uh, Lens Studio uses JavaScript um, in order to code. So here I've added a script. I'll call this my controller. Um, you can call it whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and add our controller the scene um, and we need to track how many squats the user has done so we're going to create a simple variable here called total count total squat count to be more specific um, we start at zero i'm not a cheater i'm not going to start with 100 right my squat starts at zero and count up from there so we can do function increment squat count and we're gonna uh, do something in this case when we want to increment the squat, we just need to total squat count. Uh, add one to it, and I'll just print out count is total squat count. Um, so now I have the incrementer. The question is, how do I call this? Well, when you write a script, you can connect scripts to each other by exposing as API. So in this case, I can do this script dot API dot um, I can increment the squat count equal this function. Um, so now that I've exposed it, all I need to do is tell behavior again to call this API. So I'll, I'll rename this controller so we don't get confused here. We'll go back to our behavior from earlier. So again, our um, trigger with on distance check, we're gonna call, um, here actually, let me move it here. We're gonna call, Instead of print message, we're going to call the object API and our script component, which is our controller. I'm going to call this function. We're going to call the function increment squat count. So now let's look at our video again. We're going to go down and it says count one. Looking good. Count two. So now every time we do the object distance check, it will call this API to do the squat count. Um, so this is looking good so far. Looking at the question, can you have collection detection via the cloud? Um, so in this case, we're just using computer vision from the camera. So this is uh, completely on your device, or in this case, on one studio. Um, thank you so much for the compliments that's being passed in. Please, I want this to be about you all. So feel free to message if I can slow down and so forth. But I really appreciate the love that everyone's sharing. So thank you so much. Um, and I'm going kind of fast because we have a recording. I want to make sure we cover everything. So uh, we can you can rewind when we get to the video. OK, so now we've measured our squat. Uh, the user has gone down. Single player experience, really cool. But what we can do now using Lens Cloud is add your friends to it so uh, we can have squats together uh, and encourage each other. So what you can do with Lens Studio is open the asset library. 
the asset library provides a lot of useful tools um, that you know both Snap um, have uh, have thought that might be useful, as well as from our community. Um, so go ahead and take a look at all the possible things that you can do. Um, we're continuing to add this uh, and add more things to the asset library. Um, in this case, what we want to do, because we want to add our friends to it, we're going to have connected lenses example, right? So you can hover over and get a little bit of information, create multiplayer exp AR experience, which is what we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and click import here. Um, and because Snap really cares about your privacy and so forth, when you connect to your, uh, when you have a lens that connects your friends, we want to make sure that um, we want to disable some things that, you know, we're not sure that it would be good to send over, right? So it would be bad if you can scan your room, send to your friend, because then they'll know exactly what your room looks like. So we're going to block some APIs. Uh, so you're going to confirm, save and open. And I, I, you can see that at my previous project here. So I'm going to do high edit v2. Um, where I should have said high global hackathon. Um, so, uh, but it, this was announced at AWE, and that's why it's called high AWE. But now that we've um, at the multiplayer session, um, oops, now I have two loggers. Um, let's close out this logger here. So we have our objects. We've added now through the asset library the multiplayer session. Um, and this asset is actually just a script. So you can see in your resource panel, there are the connected lenses module, which allows us to access the cloud, but we can double click the script, which provides information about the connected, uh, this example multiplayer sessions uh, script. And it says you can modify this file directly or use this API to hook from another script. So in this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and run it from my, other script to have like our main controller from earlier. I'm gonna double click the controller. I'm just gonna copy it. So um, it's always good to write comments uh, on your code. So in this case, multiplayer portion. Now let's go ahead and paste this here. I'm gonna go ahead and press save. And you'll notice you know, I have some bugs here. Uh, the red means bug, cannot write property on starter connected to solo. And you'll notice it's trying to access multiplayer session. But I haven't really said what multiplayer session is. So we're going to go ahead and add an input to tell us what multiplayer session is. Input, and I'll say this is a script component. And this is our multiplayer session, right? So let's just copy this so I don't have a typo. Um, and now if I select my controller, I can fill in my multiplayer session. So I can click on the field. There's my multiplayer session script. And now if I look at the preview, we have access to uh, join um, the connected session. So you can see now I've changed the connected lenses session. It looks slightly different because we want to give more room for the interactive experience. If you're on Snapchat, you can send a chat, um, your friends even voice call to each other. So that's really cool. Um, and so now we're connected to a session. And what we need to do next is have our friends um, be uh, or do something now that we're connected, right? Um, what do we want to do next? Well, now that we're connected to our friends, what we want to do is be able to share and store data related to the squad. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the asset library again. And this time, we're going to use persistent cloud storage. So you can see your friends uh, adding to the same cloud storage. Um, so here you can see I've now added persistent cloud storage. And we're going to try to do the same, right? So we're going to have uh, take a look at persistent cloud storage. It's just a script that provides access to you know, the APIs within Lens Studio. It's a great way to learn some examples on how you might set up your persistent cloud storage. Um, but in our case, at the top, there is uh, some example code that I can copy over. So I'm going to go ahead and copy over uh, this code. Um, so we have the multiplayer portion. We're going to go ahead and say this is now our storage portion. This is where we're going to store um, information about how many squad we've done. So here I can see on start connected to multiplayer. Um, I can replace the existing one. Um, 
And so when I join the multiplayer, when I press this button, in other words, I want to connect to my multiplayer, right? And we're gonna go ahead and press save, uh, command S or control S on your computer, and you're gonna squat. And again, we have the same problem. We're gonna do create cloud store, right, of undefined. Uh, we have the script doesn't know um, what cloud storage is. So again, we're gonna copy and paste that code from earlier. We're gonna type in um, cloud storage, script.cloud storage. So anything that starts with the word script refers to something in the script. So in this case, we need access to the cloud storage in the script. We're gonna go ahead and choose our inspector, give our cloud storage and the connection. So now we've connected the scripts together. I'm going to press launch hide the AWE. And now you can see when I connect it to multiplayer, I am going to run on cloud store ready. And or I'm going to connect to multiplayer. I'm going to create a cloud store. And on ready, uh, we're going to initialize a value in the scope. Um, in this case, my key. And what we want to do now uh, is let's test it out. I can tap on the screen um, and I have modified the value in the scope. Uh, we don't see it yet because I'm not printing it, right? So how do we print it? Well, we can take a look at the cloud storage. Um, and again, the, we have some exposed API. You'll notice here, we don't use a dot API. Um, you don't need to, uh, I sometimes do that um, because, uh, it's a bit clearer, the APIs, but in this case, you can see we don't need to uh, write the API. We just need to script list balance and scope. We've exposed that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and when you tap event, we're going to call our script.cloud storage as before, and we're going to list the values in scope. Um, so we can see again, list values in scope. Uh, it requires a scope and a callback. Um, so we're going to go ahead and list value in scope. And since we stored it in the session, we've modified the value in the scope of session. We're gonna list the value in session and we're gonna uh, give a callback. In this case, we're going to just print. Um, actually, let's just, I think the list actually just prints the thing for you. So let's just try it out. Um, uh, we have example set value of undefined online. 40, um, let's see here, um, script, uh, cloud, let me just double check here that that is the line in question. Um, um, it's always fun to do live coding if you didn't know. Um, so I'm gonna try tapping the screen one more time here. Can I read property set value in persistent storage uh, line 88? No um, oh, set value. So I am surprised because earlier this was working. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to try really quickly. I'm just going to save my project and just reopen this project. Um, and while I do that, I'm going to take a look at the questions. Um, uh, no additional questions. So hopefully things are going well. So we're gonna launch again and we're going to squat and I'm gonna tap on the screen. Um, assistant cloud. So let's take a look at our controller. That's what we were looking at earlier. We're gonna list our value here. We're gonna set values of undefined. So let's take a look again at what list values in scope uh, is doing. Um, Balance scope, we have scope callback. Uh, we're, we should be checking uh, if there is any callback. Um, but we'll try and print list. Let's go try that again. The value is undefined. Um, let me try to comment this out. Um, Okay, 
things are looking good. Okay, so I seem to have some problem with setting a value in cloud storage um, on line 88. Uh, so in the modify value in scope script. Um, ah, I know what the issue is. This is why um, uh, we have to be more careful when we code. So at this point, it's possible that I am trying to tap uh, on cloud storage before this value has initialized, right? So what we're gonna do is say, uh, has connected to cloud store equals true. Um, and we can say in the beginning, var has connected to cloud store equals false. So what we're gonna do here is if uh, has cloud store, uh, if not, if we have not connected, right? So it equals false, uh, we're gonna skip this whole thing. Um, and now let's try and run this code one more time. Now launch. And now I've initialized the value. I'm gonna tap on the screen. Um, and now you can see I've listed the value 000. Uh, I'm gonna tap one more time. And now the value is 777 because we're now listing the value. So um, it's important to make sure as you're coding um, that you are using uh, you are checking if you're already connected to your friends and so forth. So uh, hopefully that was a fun debug, debug exercise uh, together and you learned something um, in this. So now that we've connected to the store, what are we gonna do next? We're going to go ahead and um, we need to initialize our value uh, for both ourselves and the total session, right? Again, we wanna count how many squats you've done and how many friend squats your friends have done and add them together. So in addition to the value um, in the session, we need to store it in the user. And to make it easier when you're coding, oftentimes you will want to, uh, you know, things that you're gonna keep typing, um, you can store in the variable. So in this case, I'll say my squat count. And what I'm gonna do is actually just copy and paste, um, oops. I'm going to put that storage key back here. And I'm going to copy and paste this um, underneath. Um, as we just saw, because we're connected to the cloud, there's some asynchronousness to the experience because you know uh, we want to make sure we work for, for everyone, even if you have slow internet connection or fast internet connection. What we're going to do is we're first going to initialize the value in cloud storage for the session. Um, and then right after we do that, once we got information from the internet, like, hey, look, we've created the value for you. We're gonna do the same in the user scope. Um, and so we'll run it again. Um, and now we've initialized the value for the user and the session. Uh, things are looking good. And next, what we want to do is create an increment, uh, increment, an incrementer, uh, cloud storage, or let's say cloud store. Um, and what we wanna do is we're going to increment these two values every time we squat. So what do we need to do when we increment? First, we need to get the value um, of the store. So we're gonna go ahead and look here in our exposed API again. We have get value in scope, uh, a scope key callback, right? So first, again, before, to, in order to increment, we first need to know our current value. So we're going to do a script uh, cloud storage uh, dot get value in scope. Um, we'll start with uh, our storage scope session. And because once we have type ahead, storage scope session. Um, and by the way, uh, if you can use your external editor as well, I'm just using uh, let's see here, make it a bit easy. What's our storage key? Our storage key is this one. Um, and we're going to write some callback. Um, and so now that we have gotten the value in our session key or in our session, we'll also want to get it in our user. So we're going to get it also in our user. And we're going to receive this value in this callback. So the first one we're going to say, we're going to get our session value, and then we're going to get our user value, right? Um, next we can go ahead and print the result of that 
session. Uh, and we'll call it session value. And then we're going to say user value user. Um, user value here. And so because we're just playing solo right now, you'll, uh, oh, uh, I added a character there. Because we're playing solo right now, these two exact value will be the same because your friends are not connected. But you can push the device in Lens Studio and even pair additional Snapchat accounts. So you can have two phones, for example, and connect them together uh, so you can test the experience. Um, in the later, if you get the latest Lens Studio, you can also um, connect to your phone to your uh, to Lens Studio so you can test between your phone and Lens Studio. Um, and so now we've incremented the cloud store, but, the, but we're not seeing anything yet because why? We have not uh, called this function. So we're going to go ahead and call this function. When do we want to increment? Well, we want to increment every time we squat down. So again, as before, we're going to do if has connected to cloud store. Um, we're going to go ahead and increment the cloud store when we squat. So one more time, I've squatted, I've connected. And every time I squat, you'll notice I'm getting the session value and the user value. Um, so in our increment cloud store, um, we're only getting the value. So every time we squat, it's still zero. Whereas, you know, we counted that I've done seven squats. So I'm not getting the credit I deserve. So what do we need to do next? Now that we've gotten the value, we're going to go ahead and modify the value as we did earlier. So I'm going to copy this line from earlier that we had. Um, instead of my key, I'm going to use my storage key. And what's the value? Well, we have the session value. And I'm going to increment to it. And we're going to do the same for our user value. Awesome. Here we go. So now I can launch the experience. I can do the squat. And as I do the squat, you'll notice um, I'm incrementing. Oops. Uh, so you can see here, let's debug together. I've squatted, but I've only incremented the session and not the user. And it's getting kind of uh, crazy. You can see my sessions three, one, two, what's going on? Well, because in both cases, I am using the storage code session, um, whereas one should be the user. So this is what's amazing about LensCloud. It takes care of like where the data is stored for you. And, um, and so you just have to deal with what you're trying to do. So in this case, again, trying to store information about the user, store information about uh, the session. So now I'm going to squat. And you can see I've now incremented both session and user. And if I was to connect my phone and do a squat, or my friend connects their phone to the squat, you can see the session go up, but my, my personal user stays the same. OK, so th things are looking good. We've now got information of both the user and value, and we've uh, we've uh, val we've got the value. We've modified the value. Um, let's do the next thing. We're going to go ahead and show the value of the scope. Um, and so Lens Studio has a lot of different rendering capabilities that you can use out of the box. So in this case, we want to let's just display the text because we want to show the count. So add a text 3D here. You can see there's a 3D text. I'm going to put it again on the body. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in the body, let's attach that to, let's say, our spine. Um, let's put it aside here so you can see. So you can see this really small green thing. Uh, let's just make the, the font a little bit bigger. OK, it looks pretty good. OK, you can see that there's some 3D when I squat down. But it's important to think about what the user wants to do. It's a bit hard to read when the text is bending down, right? And so again, let's see, it has a lot of nice uh, rendering capabilities. In this case, I can tell it to look at, uh, always look at the camera. So I'm going to always look at the camera. Um, so in this case, you can see the 3D text. As I squat down, I'm still facing the camera. Um, let's make it bigger so we can see a bit easier here. Um, but it's facing backward. So the direction is actually, I'm going to go ahead and point it towards the Z direction. So now you can see the 3D text is going down. Um, now we just need to put our value there. 
At this point, uh, you should be familiar. We need to first get access to that object. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, whoa. Um, I'm going to put the 3D text. Uh, whoops. We're going to do text 3D. And this is going to be my 3D text uh, result display. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put that result display here. Every time I squat down, I'm going to say, let's replace it. Uh, let's get some more room here. Um, full story over here. Um, I'm going to do when we have increment the session value, you can also have access to a callback and to do something. So in this case, when we increment the value, we're going to do script.text3d. Uh, what do we call it? Result display, sorry. And we're going to change the text value to be this session value here. So we can go ahead and remove this. And we're going to go ahead and try. So I squat down. Uh, I have cannot write text on undefined. Because again, we have the issue where we haven't connected the pieces. We're going to check controller. What's our display? It is that 3D object. Um, now I'm going to squat. Let's squat. And now you can see session is one, user is one. So you can start to display to the user how they're doing. A really great way to get them motivated. Um, we can give, um, we can write messages like, Start multiplayer, start by pressing button. Uh, you can write, obviously, a better hint message here. So you can see, start by pressing button. I press the button and squat experience starts. OK, so the last thing in the next <clears throat> in the next couple of minutes, and then we'll get into the questions. Um, let's say my friend now does a squat, right? How does my lens know that they've squatted? Um, so this is where real-time API comes in. If we look back at multiplayer session, there's a section down below around on real-time store created. So this gives you a callback when a real-time store is created. And so in this case, what I want to do is when I've squatted, I'm going to go ahead and create a message like, hey, I've squatted. And the other person is going to receive or be, know that someone has created a store and do something with that store. Um, so let's annotate again. So this is our real time section portion, uh, multiplayer session on a real time store. And we're going to create a quick function here called create a uh, store. Um, and what are we going to do? We are going to take a look at the Lens Studio docs website, um, docsmap.com. We're going to type in create real time store. Because um, there's a section on the docs about creating a real time store. Um, we're going to go ahead and press that copy button here. A great way to code is to copy and paste. As we all know, we have a section. What are the options that we need to create a real time store? We're going to copy that option here. Um, so that's going to get passed in. Um, we want it to be owned by us, but we want it to be shared in the session. But because we are only notifying the other friend, we're going to F use ephemeral option, we send it, it disappears because everyone already receives that information. Um, to do the update, um, we're going to do on success, do uh, print, send, right? Um, and then if we have an error, we can go ahead and print that error. Copy and paste. Uh, here's my error. We're going to print that out here. OK. Um, so we can go ahead and run this. Uh, actually, before we do that, we need to tell when we want to create the store. So when we've modified the value of the store, we're going to create the store so the other person can receive the store or have everyone connected will know, like, hey, I've uh, done a spot. Um, so we're going to go ahead and press the button. We're just going to squeeze our glutes. We're going to squat. And you can see I've sent a message every time I've incremented the count. Um, so uh, to make it clear, uh, let other know I've squatted, I squatted, right? Um, 
So that's what we're going to do. And then um, I'm going to receive or know on every, comp on every device that a real-time store was created. So what do we do when we know on real-time store was created? Well, all we need to do is get the value again, right? Um, so copy and paste our own code. Uh, and I don't need to modify the value anymore. We just need to display the result. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. And so on real-time store created, get the value and scope. We're going to display the result. Um, and to make it easier for us to see, we're going to comment out our display from earlier. I'm going to uh, do a squat here. Uh, squat. And you'll notice we're going to send, and maybe to make it clear, we can say print receive. And so everyone uh, will get the receive, the sender will get the send. We're gonna squeeze and we'll get count to, we'll have sent, receive, and the number has incremented. Um, and so now every player knows when uh, the value of the session has gone up. And so that's a little bit of um, how to make this experience. You might want to look at the asset library and take a look at, for example, we have a progress bar. Um, and so you can uh, do things like show the users how well they're squatting, right? Because we now have a distance check. We can see uh, the progress through the squat. Um, you can modify it with how the 3D text looks. You can attach it to different parts of the body and so forth. So I really want us to just start here and you can explore different things. So we've done squat here. Maybe you want to do an overhead lift or a dumbbell curve or whatever fitness exercise you want to do. Um, so hopefully that was quite, that was interesting. I'll do one more run through of everything that we did today. In the meantime, think about the questions you may have. Um, so again, first, we understood what the body's doing using 3D body tracking. The 3D body tracking allows us to get information about uh, parts of the body, for in this case, we use the hip and the foot to detect where the user, uh, the distance between them um, to detect a squat. And we use behavior script to use to create common triggers, in this case, a distance check, as well as to call the script API. And that script API we had, what it does is it connects different asset library helpers that we have. So it connects, uh, first, we understand when the user has squat, kept track of the, font, of the squat, and then we add using the asset library a multiplayer session. So we connect multiplayer to that section. Um, and once we've received that multiplayer here, uh, we're also going to store the data into a cloud store. So every time the user has squat, we're going to uh, increment the cloud store for both the session. So everyone's squat, as well as my own squat, the user session. And then finally, when we uh, have incremented the squat, we need to let others know that we squatted. So uh, we're going to use real-time API to create a new real-time store that disappears after I've created it. So everyone knows, hey, I've squatted. And everyone will update their uh, storage scope, um, uh, their value, uh, how, many use, how many squats the user and everyone has done. Um, I did notice one last thing um, as I was coming to it. So it's always good when you're uh, creating your script or lens to try and explain it to others. Uh, it's called a rubber ducky um, because it's a good way for you to debug your issue. So in this case, I realized that I also, when um, I received the multiplayer, I also want to create that same um, cloud store. So um, make sure everyone has access to that cloud store. So that's a little bit about uh, creating your first witness experience. I'm so excited for you to try this out. We'll have the project shared out. We'll have this video shared out. Um, please take a look. I know I went fast, uh, but you'll have a recording to take a look. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and look at the questions. Um, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, we will have, again, uh, a lot of the questions is about the recording and the file. We will have both up. Um, what is the average latency for real-time API? Because if we want to make different games, latency might be important. There is a number. Um, that's a great question. 
Um, and it can de depend on who you're playing with, right? Because you can imagine if you are in an area without, with little internet connection versus if you have Wi-Fi. Um, so it's important that we take care of uh, that um, on the developer side, right? We want to make sure anyone has a good experience. So we take care of some of that in our side, but also uh, you should think about like, how do you want to predict or uh, guess uh, what data is being sent and when? So some of the information that, that's one of the reasons that in real-time API, you can say, I own this data or in the store, I own this data and only one person have access to it. So if you're reducing your health, one person will know the exact health and everyone will copy that health. So um, there's a lot of, uh, it's important to take, think about latency. I love that you're bringing it up. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. Again, I would go to community.snap.com to uh, ask that question so we can go a bit deeper into how you might take care of some of latency between real-time API. Is there a way to choose a secondary camera source like a webcam for simulating rear-facing camera as opposed to uh, pre-recorded video? This is a great question, actually. So it is possible. You can press this webcam button um, to be able to see. So let me see. Hi there. Um, to be able to and test out your squat. So this is really useful if you're doing a mouth trigger. You can open your mouth and obviously test your result, right? Um, uh, this has been useful for me in learning about cloud storage. Thank you so much. Uh, I was using world mesh to connect ones. Uh, clarifying, is it possible to get the user play space via world mesh, um, or is it all disabled for world mesh? So this is a great question. Um, so the 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 requester is asking, can you use world mesh, which allows you to build a mesh of the world in the camera in real time, with um, uh, multiplayer capabilities? As I mentioned before, Snap really cares about your privacy and how you are um, making sure you're not, we're not transferring data that shouldn't be transferred. So there are some limitations and we're not able to send the exact play space, <clears throat> the world mesh to each other, because you can imagine that could have some privacy implications. However, um, we do allow you to track um, your own space um, in order to add objects to the world. And if you're in the same location, you can track the same location because we know you're both in the same place. If you had a cube uh, on top of a table in one player, the other player will see the cube in the same uh, player. So take a look at the connected lenses template, which shows a little bit about how you might uh, take care of world mesh within multiplayer uh, sessions. Um, so we have this question specifically around the send message and on message receive. Uh, so basically, uh, the send message API is kind of what we saw at the bottom um, here around let others know I squatted and this multiplayer session um, on real-time store created. So what I would say is if you go into the example from the asset library, um, there are different examples here. So for example, get value or list value um, and some other nicety like initialize value and has value. Um, and at the top, you get to see some API as well. And so the way it generally works, let's see if I can uh, expand this here, is when you create, so in the multiplayer session capability, uh, you have a, a, a variety of hooks on real-time store, created, updated, deleted, and so forth. So if you're just trying to do messaging, what you can do is create a store that disappears when you send it, right? A message, you can imagine a store being like a piece of paper, you create the piece of paper, everyone sees the piece of paper and then it disappears. And so if you want, um, you will get on the real-time store created to write your callback, what happens when you get a piece of paper. And then you can create uh, a look at our documentation here. Um, and that shows a little bit of information around real-time store creation. Um, and then how you also uh, get results from it. There is also another connected lenses or multiplayer example on the Lens Studio. Uh, I believe it's called connected voting. Um, this shows a little bit more about sending messages to each other. It's a bit simpler than the full connected lenses, which is trying to use to track objects in the real world. Uh, the connected voting uh, template just provides you with simple 
uh, message uh, send and receive. So take a look at that. Um, I'm happy to uh, answer any question again. I'm going to plug it one more time, community.snap.com. Um, yep, this too. Um, ask questions, we'll jump on there. Um, seems like the session shows error. Did the session die? It's possible that, um, I'm not sure where that error is. I think that error earlier is because I haven't connected to the session. Um, can we send death data and collision between users? Uh, I believe um, we don't allow that because of privacy implication. However, if you go into the our documents um, in the guide section under lens features, lens cloud, or connect the lenses actually, uh, there is a section in the connected lens overview that tells you about some restrictions. So take a look at this restriction. Um, you know, it might be a uh, privacy implication to be able to share your birthday. So we disable that. Um, so take a look at that page. Um, how to bend any to the image. Uh, for example, if we turn left or right to the image, you bend with the face. Great question. I think you're looking for the face mask capability. So go ahead and type in face mask. Um, and you should be able to find some information on that or again, ask the community. Um, uh, and then there's some questions around machine learning. Um, I would definitely recommend checking out the machine learning section of our website. It's a great way to learn uh, machine learning in general, not just with Lens Studio, right? So with Snap ML, uh, actually let's just search Snap ML. Um, you can learn about how machine learning is used in Lens Studio, as well as get example notebooks so you can make your own uh, style transfer experience. Um, and it's a great way to help us see what you're working on and thinking about in machine learning. Um, so take a look at this as well. Um, so to summarize, I know we're close to the top of the hour. I wanna make sure that we uh, leave on time. We'll, we'll have this video recording online. We'll have uh, the files online. And so you can take a look and dig deeper. Take a look at the community to ask questions. If you try to do the project and you're not sure where to go next, uh, check out the documentation for some code snippets and examples. And thank you all so much for coming here and taking the time to spend with us. I had a really great time trying to show you how you can make your first multiplayer experience or your second or your third um, for the experts in the room. I can't wait to see you next time. Uh, thank you all. I will talk to you soon. See you online.